Hey guys, welcome back to a new video by Biology with Zhang Xuan. So today we are going to attempt the Cambridge ITCSE Biology Paper 6, Alternative to Practical, the May June 2024 series, Paper 6, Variant 1. So if there are any questions with this ATP paper, feel free to comment down in the comment section below, like any of my past year paper videos. So let's start off with this paper. So question number one, cooking fruit and vegetables in water reduces the vitamin C content. The vitamin C is transferred from the fruit and vegetables to the water by diffusion. DCPIP can be used to estimate the concentration of vitamin C. The blue DCPIP solution reacts with the vitamin C solution and, the, and becomes colorless. So a student investigated the effect of cooking time on the vitamin C content of the water. So we stop here and we find out what do we understand about this um, question. So they say that the vitamin C is transferred from the food and vegetables to the water by diffusion. So this would be the sign of our DV because we want to check on how much vitamin C is being diffused out from the fruit or the vegetables. And what is the IV then? The IV is stated in the second paragraph. A student investigated the effect of cooking time on the vitamin C content of the water. So the answer really is the time, okay? Because we are changing the time, the longer that we cook, what is the effect? It's gonna happen on our, uh, the diffusion of the vitamin C coming out from the fruit or vegetable. So if you have a read here, this is the, uh, steps by step they have been given here and now they have asked you figure 1.1 shows the student's notebook okay and then where they recorded their results and calculated values so the volume of the cpip has been shown to remaining in the syringe from one minute is 3.6 and then uh cetera, up to five minutes and the volume of the cpip added is one minute 1.4 two minutes 2.2 three minutes 2.8 four minutes is 3.2 and what is five minutes so a part one using the equation calculate the volume of the cpip added to the sample taken five at five minutes so we take the starting volume of the cpip in the syringe which is actually five centimeter cube and then we minus off with the volume of DCPIP remaining, which is 1.6. Your answer you get is 3.4 centimeter cube. Part two, prepare a table and record the results shown in figure 1.1 and your answer to 1A part one. So you just copy this, okay, the volume of DCPIP added with the time, okay? So in, as a result, your, your table should look like this. And then you just make sure you have the units of minutes and the uh, volume of the CPIP added as CM cube. And then you just fill in your uh, the values into the results table. Part three, state a conclusion for the results. So if you can see that the longer the cooking time has occurred, more of the, D, um, there's more the CPIP coming out. So the CPIP remaining the has been added has increased. So you can see the long, longer cooking time will allow more vitamin C to diffuse out. B part one, state the independent variable in, in this investigation. So I've mentioned that it's the effect of cooking time. So you can just put that time. Part two, state the purpose of wrapping the beaker in the foil step one. So you can see that a piece of foil was wrapped around the beaker so that the base and the sides of the beaker were covered. The top of the beaker was not covered. So what is the purpose of, the, of it being wrapped is to act as insulation. Okay, so this is one of the uh, fixed answers that we have. Or some people can say to decrease heat loss or to maintain the temperature of the beaker. All right, so these are some few answers that you can have. And part three, explain why it was important to remove the air bubbles from the syringe in step six. So again, is to make sure that DCPIP volume is accurate because when you have air bubbles, it can kind of disturb the actual reading of the uh, syringe. And then uh, we have other answers like you can would affect the volume of the CPIP. Incorrect volume of the CPIP will be recorded because if you have a little bit of anomalies happening, then this can cause the volume to be a bit inaccurate. Question two, plan an investigation to determine the effect of light intensity on photosynthesis in an aquatic plant. So this is another uh, six mark question, planning investigation, which relates to light intensity. 
So if you have done a lot of past year paper, the light intensity mechanism is always the same where we always use a shining light or a light source and we control the distance of uh, the light intensity. So for this case, the IV will be two different light intensity. I've stated 10 centimeter or 20 centimeter away from the plant and the DV because you want to see the effect of light intensity on photosynthesis. So photosynthesis is a process which they can produce glucose and oxygen. So the oxygen gas is the one that we want to see whether photosynthesis has occurred. So we measure the volume of oxygen gas is being produced. This is the dependent variable. Now, when you have mentioned the IV and DV, you must also mention the methods that you're going to take. So for, you, for this case, you are using different lamp distance and you collect the oxygen gas using a gas syringe or any other displacement methods that can be used to measure the actual uh, volume of gas being collected. And we, since it's an aquatic plant, the plant has to be submerged uh, to add as a form of cover. And the CV, uh, which is the constant variable, which we have a lot, you can always use the same type of aquatic plant. Uh, the time to collect the volume of oxygen, there's always a time period that you must set to make sure that uh, all each of the experiment done is under the same time period where the oxygen has been collected. You can also measure to maintain the same temperature. The concentration of hydrogen carbonate has added uh, or same source of CO2. So this is some... Uh, additional things that if you didn't thought of and now you can repeat the experiment two or more times and the safety is to make sure that you don't touch the bulb because it's all the while heating so it can be hot right so this is how you answer your six marks question question 3a figure 3.1 is a photograph of a cross section of the persimmon fruit so now they've asked you to draw a large diagram of the persimmon fruit shown in figure 3.1 so for this kind of drawing question, it's actually really simple. Just make sure that you follow uh, the rules that make sure that it's a single clear outer line and the size is at least the width of the image and make sure you show the six seats that we have and then two with no seats. And then of course you show the incidence. Okay, all of these sharp points must also be shown. You don't just draw the inside. And one thing is that do not shape. Okay, this question has given you darkened seeds, so you, you must not shade it. So this is how it should look. Okay, it looks a little bit ugly, but this is how it's supposed to look like. Okay, so part two is a magnification question. Part, they say line PQ on figure 3.1 represents the diameter of the persimmon fruit. Measure the length of the line PQ in figure 3.1. So I got 104 millimeters and then you can just calculate the actual diameter of the persimmon fruit using the formula and your measurement so i use i m so you just take i which is the im, im the image length divided by the magnification which can be found here so you're going to get a uh, actual length of 47.3 millimeters part b plants can make fat starch and proteins Part 1 state the names of the reagents that can be used to test samples of plant tissue for starch and protein. So for starch, we use iodine solution and protein, you use burette solution. And now, part 2 is a very interesting question. All the time, we always say describe how to test for reducing sugars. We use Benedict solution and then we heat it up. This time, they've asked you to test a sample of plant tissue for fat. So fat, we test by the emulsion test. So emulsion test is a, something that you also have to memorize is that first thing you have to add ethanol. You add ethanol, then you add water together. When you add ethanol and water together, once everything is inside intact already, then you shake. So the, as a result, it will show emulsion on the particular test tube, for example. So this is how you test for a sample of fat. So part C, the enzyme pectinase is used to produce apple juice. Pectinase breaks down the cell wall in the apple tissue. This increases the volume of juice that can be extracted from the apples. A student investigated the effect of concentration of pectinase on the volume of juice extracted from the chopped apple. So the effect of the concentration of pectinase, this is the IV, and the volume of the juice extracted is the DV. So with the masses of seven samples of chopped apples were measured, the samples were then put into different beakers. 50 centimeter cube of pectinase solution was added to six of the beakers and the concentration of the pectinase solution was different in each beakers. 
and is kept at thermostatically controlled water bath set at 37 degrees and the contents of each beaker were filled through filter paper and the liquids was collected in the measuring cylinder and the volume is recorded. So the dependent variable as we mentioned is the volume of juice uh, produced or the volume of juice extracted from chopped apples and state two variables which you can say is the temperature of 37 degrees and 50 centimeter cube of pectinase solution is constant it's added to six of the beakers means this is one of the reasons that is kept constant throughout and part three identify the hazard in the method described in 3c and suggest a safety precaution to reduce the hazard first thing the hazard could be the enzyme the volume of the pectinase solution the precaution is you can wear goggles or glove just as simple as this another one we can also mention is uh, cutting or chopping apples the precaution is that you must cut onto a hard surface cut away from the body and then part four the student did not repeat the investigation only collected one set of results explain why it's better to collect several sets of results so there's a previous uh, comment that i've received is that uh, is reliable results acceptable this is not acceptable because it is a very general answer for this kind of question you collect several sets of results is to identify anomalies or anomalous results the anomalous result means that the result which does not fit the general trend of the results that has been given so this is what we are supposed to identify okay and part five the seven beaker of the chopped apple did not contain the pectinase solution state what should have been added to the beaker to make it a control experiment so a control experiment is all about substituting something with water for example so for this case you can say using the same volume of water will be already considered already you can also mention you instead of the vo of the normal pectinase solution at 37 degrees you put boiled pectinase or denatured pectinase because if you add this insight, uh, this would not, this would already become a control experiment. This is to check whether the pectinase solution added is making changes or not. And now to say the result of the pectinase investigation are shown in table 3.1. Now they've given you all of the results here. A sample of 150 gram of chopped apple was placed in the beaker with the 0.8% pectinase solution. Using the information in table 3.1, calculate the volume of liquid collected in the measuring cylinder. So include the unit and space for working. So how you're going to find this is actually really simple. You just take 150 gram and you just find 0 0.8 to 0 0.92. So you want to calculate the volume which has been collected. So you take times by 0 0.92. Okay, then your answer is 138 centimeter. Cube. Make sure you have unit because unit itself is considered as one mark. Now you have to plot the line graph on the grid of the data in table 3.1. So this is all of your axes and plots. So I've already lacked something here is to put volume of, of collected, uh, of liquid collected, of liquid collected. This is at centimeter cube okay so centimeter cube uh, you can also per per gram of chopped apple per gram of chopped apple okay so just basically add this and then your your line should look like this and as a result describe the relationship between the volume of the liquid collected from the chopped apple and the concentration of the pectinase solution so you describe how the graph generally looks like so at first the concentration increases then the volume increases then it eventually levels off here until here so it eventually levels off at 0.8 percent concentration or you can say it becomes constant at 0.8 percent concentration so that's it for this video thank you so much for watching feel free to ask me any any questions regarding with this paper see you guys in the next video bye bye